In May 2008, the car carrier Grand Neptune was forced to take evasive action doing a complete 360 degree turn in the middle of one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. It looked to them like the cruise ship Costa Atlantica was doing the maritime equivalent of travelling up the wrong side of the motorway. But what really happened? On the 14th of May 2008, the row row vessel Grand Neptune completed loading vehicles in the port of Antwerp, Belgium. She's a 200 meter, almost 60,000 ton, pure car carrier with a service speed of 19.8 knots. Her track was due to take her from Antwerp to the Middle East and would include a passage through one of the world's busiest shipping lanes, the Strait of Dover. The Strait is so busy in fact, that it was one of the first places in the world to adopt a traffic separation scheme. They're a bit like highways for ships with their own very specific rules about navigation. For example, you must be in the correct traffic lane following the general direction of traffic flow. If you leave a lane part way down, you must do so at a shallow angle and if you're going to cross a traffic lane, you must do it as close to perpendicular as you possibly can. Anyway, Grand Neptune's crew were well aware of the high stress potential in the strait, so they'd taken on a deep sea pilot. In effect, they voluntarily boosted their bridge team with somebody who was extremely experienced in the area. Talking of boosting your bridge team, now seems like a great opportunity to thank this video's sponsor, Star Trek Fleet Command. One of the most beloved Star Trek franchises, Deep Space Nine, is finally arriving in Star Trek Fleet Command, available for free on iOS, Android and Windows. This new arc will offer something for everyone, with three new officers focused on ship survivability, new missions following the fan favourite narrative of Deep Space Nine and Alliance star bases. We finally get to welcome the new crew members Epic, Cisco, and Rares, Kira and Miles O'Brien. The crew's primary focus will be on ship survivability over damage. Two officers will be useful in any armada and one will only be useful against Alliance Starbase armadas. Players within an Alliance will be able to work together to build an Alliance Starbase which is a physical embodiment of Alliance's strength pushing members to work together for shared progression and mutual benefits. By contributing to an Alliance Starbase, players can take control over new system resources in order to upgrade the base to provide new buffs to their Alliance and themselves individually. Alliance members will have the chance to connect and work together to keep, maintain and defend their base from enemies. Download now using my link below or by scanning the QR code to join the fight. Anyway, back in the Strait of Dover, we just learned that Grand Neptune had voluntarily boosted their bridge team with a deep sea pilot. By around 1 o'clock the next morning, they'd settled into the southwest bound lane on the English side, keeping a continuous watch on other traffic. Meanwhile, somewhere in the south, the cruise ship Costa Atlantica was lining up to join the TSS in the opposite direction. She's a 293 meter cruise ship with a surface speed of around 22 knots. She was on a repositioning cruise from Savona to Amsterdam, taking in Malaga, Cadiz, Lisbon, Vigo, Le Havre and Harwich. She had left Le Havre around 5pm the night before and was due at Harwich Pilot Station around 6am the next morning. They joined the north eastbound traffic lane and proceeded at an economical speed to meet their ETA. Now, their final destination was on the other side of the traffic separation scheme so they knew they'd have to cross a traffic lane. The plan was to cross in this area here somewhere between the Mike Papa Charlie Boy and the Sandetti Light Vessel on a heading of around 333 degrees. As they approached, they kept to the port side of the lane and used the radar to check on the upcoming traffic in the southwest bound lane. They identified two vessels of interest, the MSC Serena and the Grand Neptune. Both were acquired by ARPA, the automatic radar plotting aid which continuously tracks the range and bearing of a radar echo and calculates things like its course and speed as, as well as the closest point of approach. As they drew a beam of the Mike Papa Charlie Boy, the officer of the watch intended to cross the lane but the master requested a trial manoeuvre on the radar instead. This lets you input a change in your own course or speed and basically tests whether you're going to be clear of other vessels and by how much. In this case, they put on a trial alteration to 333 degrees and read the CPA of the closest target to be 0.87 miles in 13 and a half minutes. The master knew that by the time they finished the turn the CPA would have reduced so Rather than come right the way around, he instead decided to follow the stern of the Serena, intending to pass astern of her and ahead of the Grand Neptune. What they didn't realise however, was that their information was incorrect because they were not that familiar with the trial manoeuvre function on their radars. Where they'd read the CPA to be 0.87 miles, that was the live CPA, not the result of the trial. Not only that, but the alteration of course had been input instantaneously, so without a time delay, even though they knew it would take some time to get around and steady up. 
Large cruise ships always turn slowly, simply because if they turn quick, they'd lean over too far and it would be a risk to the passengers. Anyway, had all that been done correctly, they'd have instead seen at least a mile CPA and possibly made the complete turn right away. Due to the misinterpretation, however, they were instead making a really slow turn, following the stern of the MSC Serena. On board the Grand Neptune, they'd also been looking ahead and had the Costa Atlantica acquired. From their perspective, they could see her slowly turning to port with the CPA closing all the time. As they got within three miles, alarms started to sound, telling them that the closest point of approach was only a couple of hundred meters in only five minutes. To us, that sounds a lot, but when it's two massive ships, each almost 300 meters in length, the margin of error of a 0.2 mile CPA could still result in a collision. The crew still didn't know the intentions of the Costa Atlantica, so they started to take evasive action. They put the rudder to starboard and called up Dover Coast Guard. He's on a collision course with me. He should pass around my stern. He's determined to cross my bow at zero. In the exchange that followed, Costa Atlantica replied, Yes, we are clear. I'm passing you at zero. Zero four CPA. By now, Costa Atlantica had closed to 1.16 miles with a CPA of 0.13 in 2.9 minutes. Grand Neptune had no choice. They put their rudder hard to starboard and came right the way around, completing a full 360 degree turn so as to avoid what looked to them like an imminent collision. From the point of view of Costa Atlantica, however, things obviously looked a little different. They'd been following the stern of the Serena, then as soon as that was clear, came round quicker to port. The Grand Neptune was showing as having a CPO of practically zero in four and a half minutes, but they knew it was unreliable as they were still turning and that it would only increase as they continued to turn to port. To increase it more, they increased their rate of turn and pushed up on their engines. To them, the actions of the Grand Neptune may have looked a bit extreme. So what really went on and how could we avoid it happening again? Well, the first thing was that trial maneuver. Had that been done correctly, Costa Atlantica would probably have crossed clear ahead of the other vessels and none of this would have happened. After that, the decision to follow the stern of the Serena meant that rather than crossing the traffic lane, the Costa Atlantica was more closely steaming against the flow of traffic, causing a great deal of confusion. Almost all of her alterations of course were small and slow, making them very hard to be interpreted by other vessels observing visually or by radar. Really, what should have happened is that once they decided against crossing ahead of the Serena, they should have identified a more appropriate time to cross, possibly reducing speed so that they were ready to make a tighter alteration of course to quickly set up for a perpendicular crossing whenever they identified an opportunity. Instead, we ended up with a situation where another vessel was forced to take action because they felt that a collision was imminent. Now, this video was based on a real accident investigation report published by the UK's MIIB. I'll post a link to the report down below so you can go and check it out. Their reports are published with the sole intention of preventing future accidents through the ascertainment of its causes and circumstances. It's not about blame, it's about learning what's happened in the past in an attempt to reduce the chance of it happening again. Again, a massive thank you to Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring this video. Remember, it's available for free on iOS, Android and Windows, so download it now using my link below or by scanning the QR code to join the fight.